when I see it in the second night was okay. I, I, you know, okay. I'm now I'm aware of how much anger I'm carrying. The intention was to release it. And when I said that intention, when I started going down the journey, it was the message that I got was very clear. Say, that's past, that's behind you. Let it go. And, <clears throat> and since you are like in an altered state, like how is that message getting? Well, it was vocal. It was vocal. So it, like, yeah, it was, it, it was vocal. Yes. It was, it, it was vocal. It, it was very, it was very clear. Like that is behind you. Move on. I am Antonio Zanalato. And I am your co-host, Jacob Saldana. And I'm here to serve men who are seeking more out of their life and themselves. Men who are ready to dive deeper and do the work. This podcast we will help increase your curiosity in order to live more of an examined life. To live with integrity for yourself and others. And to accept the things in life that you can control. Our goal is to help you bring out a warrior within you. Welcome to the Warrior Lab. Welcome back. It's Wednesday. Another Warrior Lab coming at you. It's your co-host, Jacob Saldana, with my guy. What's up, Jacob? Antonio Zanolato here. And welcome back. Today, we're going to dive a little bit into the conversation of plant medicine. So in this whole realm of self-discovery and self-improvement, it's it's definitely a very um, kind of popular topic of conversation uh, and something that I am very available to discuss just my own journey with different plants to kind of help me unpack a few things that I've been struggling with or whatever it might be. Uh, I've been really kind of deep diving on, on how to integrate plants into again, Im improvement. So, you know, we've been a culture of altered states for a very long time. Some we give the green light on some that we ha have a problem on. And I think, uh, at least for me, I really started, uh, to question why some of these mind altering, um, elixirs or whatever it might be are allowed and, and thrown in our face and made available to us at every single corner while others are more taboo or we're, we're told they're going to fry our brains or whatever it might be. So for me, once I really started asking that question, I gave up alcohol mm -hmm. um, and I started to learn more about other options, whether it was a healthier relationship with cannabis or psilocybin. Uh, and um, yeah, started to, to partake in my own process there to, to do some work. Right. And the intention was hugely different. I think maybe if, if we're introduced to alcohol with like an intention setting situation, we might have some be better benefits, but it's not the relationship or the culture that we have around alcohol. So I was very conscious with that. And for you, I know we've had a, a few conversations about your journey mm -hmm. and you have kind of some fresh stories to tell that, yeah. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll, I'm, I'll be hearing for the first time. Yeah. Uh, why don't you uh, maybe dive a little bit about into sure, your Sure, sure. Before I, before I do that, though, I want to I wanna say that, you know, coming here and knowing that uh, this conversation uh, could have been a potential, you know, com potential conversation for the podcast, I was a little bit hesitant on the sharing because my fear on that is that people out there who's listening could take a run with it, not knowing that there has to be some work done leading into, <clears throat> into, into, you know, the experience, into the journey. Yeah. So like the judgment, I mean, the yeah. judgment of that, that's yeah. even kind of was what I was Go. talking about, right? It's like getting the framework right here and where, you know, why should there be any judgment towards you? Because somebody says that this is potentially. No, no, actually, thing. no, I was probably, I wasn't, I wasn't too clear. Sorry. No, I, I in the, what I, I meant is like, I want to make sure that people don't just 
take my sharing and run with that meaning like go and go do, and do what it. and do what I did without yeah. having done gotcha, gotcha. the, the pre proper preparation, yeah. the proper work. Perfect timing for a disclaimer. Yeah. <laughs> the yes. information we're sharing here is just our, yeah. our, um, our experiences. It's here kind of geared for, for entertainment and just a little bit of knowledge for you. But again, don't take any of this as medical advice. Right. You got to do your own research, um, and know that some of these compounds are still deemed, um, illegal. Yeah, illegal and you know potentially dangerous. Yeah, potentially dangerous. Um, so with that said, um, also personal growth, it doesn't have to look in a, any specific way. Personal growth. I made a post about this not too long ago on my Instagram. What I said that. I've been in a conversation on personal growth for the last two decades. Yeah. And, and I changed the platform, platform many times. And I even went back to old platforms that I abandoned. And that allowed me to progress the way that I've done, you know, I did the way that I have. And you know, I started my personal growth, personally, my, my, my journey started in adopting objectivism, right? I don't know if anyone out there is familiar with Iron Rand work, uh, but that was my introduction to personal growth. And then- Cognitive uh, behavior therapy? No, 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 actually objectivism, it's a philosophy, right? Uh, embrace atheism as a, as a belief system. Uh, and- other, 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 um, other pillars. Uh, so, but that, nonetheless, that was my introduction to personal growth. Uh, then I moved away from that and I went to, uh, liberalism. And from that, then I went to Christianity and all those worked until they stopped working, until they stopped yielding results. And maybe I'm lucky that I'm a curious individual mm -hmm. where, okay, I'm not afraid to, to pivot, to, to shift and, and, and looked at other, you know, at other venues available out there. Mm -hmm. Right. No, no, a lot of people I'm realizing not many people are like that. A lot of people are, are afraid to, Pick through, pick through that door. Yeah, they choose. They choose the path. They dig in. And yeah, and they stuck on that path. Yeah, and they stuck on that path. And so again, I don't want to. I don't want to derail from the from the the main conversation here. Is like, do not discard an opportunity. Uh, 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 I guess I, you could say, um, don't do not discard like a mythology just because it does not align with your current belief, right? With your, let's, let's, let's say when I tried plant medicine, particularly ayahuasca, I was still my, my, my spiritual, my, my religious belief was Christianity, which was in total clash with that, mm -hmm. but I was still open. I'm like, I was still open to try it. What is the worst that could happen? Jesus, God would dishonor me. Well, I've he done would, much, he you would know. I tell you in person while you're tripping. <laughs> huh? he, would, he would probably tell you in person. <laughs> That's while what you're I'm saying. Out. That's what I'm saying. I did many, you know, many worse, you know, worse thing than that. Mm -hmm. And I still felt his love, if that makes sense. Yeah. So that wasn't a concern. So yeah, as we have to be curious, we have to be, we have to be willing to, to, to stay open, to be open. Right. And maybe not everything gets in alignment. At the end of the day, we, you know what I mean? Even though it doesn't fit our, our current belief system, as long as it's in alignment with our core values, with the direction we are adding, I believe it's worth it at least 
look into it at the very least. Yeah, All right? uh, I agree. So this is my second time going back to, to, um, to the, the journey. This is my second time uh, ex experimenting ayahuasca. My first, my first um, sitting took place last year, towards the end of the last year, I believe it was October. Uh, it was a two day sitting. Uh, the first one was probably the most intense one out of all of them. And it was around anger. Why I am experiencing so much anger when dealing with people, in particular with people close to me, mm -hmm. right? So there was a big, a big <laughs> discovery around that. And although there was some shame and guilt around it, I also found the, I guess you can say the, the jam, the, the, how you call it? The, the, um, the, the golden, yeah, golden the, the gem. You found the, the gem, little gem yeah. In there. Yeah. The little gem in there that, you know, that anger actually in more times than others allowed me to show up in a very powerful way and allowed me to progress in many ways that otherwise I wouldn't have been able to. Yeah. And that, I mean, that's kind of also in regards to like the book that you just kind of read about, yes. you know, shining the light on, on our darkness. Right. So this initially showing up after doing the, the ayahuasca and it showing up in this very angry, you know, your initial response to that was like, Oh, anger, bad shame. Like, mm -hmm. I don't want that. I need to mask that versus, looking at it from a different lens and now this insight that it, it was a somewhat of a good quality, at yes. least to that point. Yes. Right. And now, yes. now you're like, okay, maybe I need to shift that. Correct. Correct. And, and I believe it's not so much shifting. It's about capping it because I think the progression to anger rage is aggression. And I believe there is a lot of benefit that comes out of aggression one of them being the primary one of self-defense, right? Self-defense. If we are not aggressive enough, chances are we're going to get the worst out of whatever challenge is put in front of us. Physical, whatever that may be, right? So I believe that it's not so much abandoning, abandoning the, the feeling, but it's about moderating it, right? Yeah. Moderating it. Yeah. And, um, and, uh, yeah. So going back to that, yeah, that was my, 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 my first time sitting with the, with the plant. And, um, and although, you know, I still to this date, you know, almost a year later, I still experience, um, uh, times where, you know, I feel angry and I feel, I feel, um, I feel, you know, my feelings are taking over. Um, I, at least I have awareness. At least I have awareness. I know why I'm feeling that way. Mm -hmm. Right. I know it has nothing to do with the person that it's standing across from me. It has everything to do with me. So how did, um, how did the second, um, one go about, was it the same set and setting, same kind the of same setting, same, the second night. so the second night was obviously the same. Uh, both both journeys took place in the same in the same settings. The one in October, the one this past weekend. Um, the second night uh, was uh, uh, much more gentle, um, calm, and it was more around uh, compassion, mm -hmm. love, and uh, understanding of the feminine divine. The, 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 the feminine energy and, uh, and, uh, and having compassion around that. So that, you know, although it was much, you know, calmer than the first night, uh, it was just as powerful. 
Gotcha. So the feminine energy within you or respecting it? No, no, out, 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 you know, outward. And I, I believe, and I believe, I guess by honoring, honoring the, the, the external feminine energy, you are honoring your own yeah. energy. I think you are probably, you know what I mean? When you are, you know, being, not being as compassionate when you are dealing with your spouse, your partner, whatever, at the end of the day, you are disowning your own feminine divine. Yeah, you're you're basically putting a cap on the idea that you need that empathy, you Correct. need that compassion. Correct. Um, it's like, you know, say, say a softer trait or a softer quality, uh, being able to, just like you're identifying anger as a certain type of thing, these other aspects of, of ourselves, we need to embrace and identify as well, you know, so, so we can be our, the full versions of ourselves. Right. And I think that's a big part of not only these conversations, but, um, I mean, for me, it's the ice bath too. It's like, you're using this to be able to find other tools and other emotions that you can tap into to, to soothe yourself. Mm -hmm. If you only have anger and you only have aggression, you only have fight. That's not going to work in so many different areas. You know, some areas we don't get to test that. Um, but there are, there, there are areas that we can, and that's like the ice bath, like seeing some, a guy who's big, strong, carrying himself as he's hard, only has that anger, only has that fight mentality. They get their ass handed to him in the ice bath. Mm -hmm. They run, you know what <laughs> I mean? They run yes. because they can't sit with themselves and tell themselves that it's okay and breathe. They, mm -hmm. they can't tap into that feminine side of the energy that is just, yeah. it's just untapped part, right? Yeah. You know, so like if, um, if your goal is to become the best version of yourself, it's probably in your best interest to figure out how to use those qualities to your advantage. Yeah. To, you know? to harness, to harness those qualities for sure. Yeah. For sure. And, you know, and, 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 and there is a very, you know, misconception around the feminine energy, you know, when it comes, you know, when it comes to men and, um, uh, so there is, there is the, you know, a lot, a lot, a lot of men have a tendency to shy away from, from, from that and from that conversation. Yeah. But I mean, I think a lot of it is also just using past cultural stereotypes or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. Um, and the things that we're using at whatever time stamp that we're currently in as the definition of even masculine, feminine, or, or any of that. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, I was, uh, <clears throat> speaking of, I guess, psychedelics or whatever, I went to the Huntington library, which is over here in Pasadena, like this huge park museums and everything. And, um, I had kind of the full day. So took a little mushrooms and just found myself laying in like the grass for a good chunk of the day. But then I went and I went to this museum that they had there and it's like walking through, I don't know what, what year it was, but back in the day when these, these, all these dudes were wearing wigs and whatnot. Right. So it's like the things that we define as masculine or feminine are just sometimes just cultural things. When I mean, like, these were all the OGs back there wearing these tights and these knickerbockers and these wigs. Like these were cats that had their next to their bed stand we'll, we'll, a wig yeah. with curlers in yeah, it. Like they, we'll, the, we'll, they will shoot you. Like, they will, they will, geez, right? So it's like, you know, like just my point in that is don't get so caught up with what, you're being told because of the culture and this timestamp of what it is right now, we're talking about a bigger thing here yes. that can't really be labeled like that. Um, so, so in regards to like being able to just, to, to see some compassion for that feminine energy outside of yourself, inside yourself, what, how did that actually look when you were taking like the ayahuasca Did that show up in like visuals? And oh yeah. Like, visuals, like, visuals. Um, so it's funny, right? So the first night, uh, uh, I don't know if you ever, you, anyone of you have been in a setting in ayahuasca, in ayahuasca ceremony, but the one I've been to, uh, they separate man from woman. They put the man on one side of the room, woman across, across from it. And, um, and the first night I was, you know, men around me were purging, uh, were throwing up, um, woman across there were crying, moaning, and I was like, you know, the first night when I when I was experiencing anger, I was my my response to that was like, bunch of freaking pussies, like shut up, like what you you know what I mean, like what are you crying for? What do you you know what I mean, like mm -hmm. that was the response. Did you right? almost not believe that they were that was real for them? 
you know, because no, you- no, no, I wasn't, that wasn't even a thought. So I wasn't even like connecting to what was going on. What, what could have been going on with them at that point in time? I was, I was just, I was just reacting. I was just judging. I guess you can say the action itself of purging of throwing up, vomiting, or, you know, females crying, hysterically crying and, and moaning. And so I was, I was reacting to that, to that, you know, to, to their, to their experience. And the first night I was very judgmental and I'm like, you know, the, the men around me were purging, like you guys saw a bunch of pussies. Right. And the woman across the street, I'm like, you know, I mean, I, you know, I was, I was not necessarily being <laughs> nice in my thoughts either. Yeah. So, but all that, all that, all that conversation, all the, all the, all the narrative changed the second night where I was experiencing compassion. I was experiencing love where actually I was able to connect you know, even more so with the feminine across the room. And I was like, wow, she must be going, you know, through some real heavy stuff right now. Mm -hmm. Wow. I could be, you know, you know, how much pain am I inflicting to the woman around me that one day could be sitting in a room in the same space and going through that. Right? So now the narrative changed just because my, my work, my work, whatever I was working through, shifted from, from anger, aggression, rage to love and compassion. Right? So, so yeah, it was very powerful. It was very powerful. Like I say, it was much gentler, was much calmer, but nonetheless, I, I, I guess you can deem it, I personally can deem it more powerful than the first night. Yeah, for sure. And this was the the first night of the second. Correct. Ceremony. So, Correct. You, so anger still kind of came up again. No anger. Right no, now. actually, no anger. The intention when I when I sit in the second night was okay. I, I, you know, okay. I'm now I'm aware of how much anger I'm carrying. The intention was to release it. And when I said that intention, when I started going down the journey, it was the message that I got was very clear. Say, that's past, that's behind you. Let it go. And, <clears throat> and since you are like in an altered state, like how is that message getting? Well, it was vocal. It was vocal. So it was, yeah, it was, it, it was vocal. Yes. It was, it, it was vocal. It, it was very, it was very clear. Like that is behind you. Move on. So with, um, say with that voice, Yes. You know, hearing that, like who, who and what do you think that voice is? That's me. That's me. That's my, that's my, that's my, that's my subconscious. Yeah. That's me. I mean, um, for, for me, again, I haven't done ayahuasca, yeah. but you know, I've been in this very heavy altered state where I'm, I'm kind of, I don't, I don't recall hearing voices, but I remember obviously seeing things from a completely different lens, almost from another version of it. And to me, and again, I'm not religious at all. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'll, I'll, I would probably bring this back to describing it as like a God type of thing, but there was no separation between this God or this bigger um, being mm -hmm. and myself. Mm -hmm. So however that sounds as I'm saying it, it was almost like myself and God, the, the was one. I believe, I believe the way they work around that, because everyone's uh, 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 spiritual beliefs are different in those settings. They uh, refer to the plant as the grandmother. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I mean, as I say, God, I'm yeah. Yeah, when I, when I, even I say God, and when somebody else says God to me, yeah. I immediately think just the universe, yes. just like, yeah. that's what mm -hmm. my, you know, the, my translation of it is. Mm -hmm. So as far as like being, like being the cre, what, yeah, it's just, it's that, that's helpful. Well, the yeah. grandmother. So, but it yeah. wasn't the grandmother that I was talking to you. I, you know what? I, I didn't give it too much. You know, I didn't give it too much thoughts. I didn't really care. I don't really care where those voices come from. I, I don't, I don't try to explain them. I don't try to explain, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to spend too much time on it. Mm -hmm. I just, um, 
take him as being true. Yeah. Right. I think, I think, you know, I, why I personally um, fixated on a little bit more, like what I was seeing was because for one, it made me feel fully connected to the things that were around me, you know, especially when I feel so removed from it or so separate mm -hmm. um, and, and why it's easy to slide into say a victim mentality or whatever it might be for me. Cause I feel like nobody really gets it or nobody gets, but in that moment, like I was fully the one, you know, and, uh, I was also a little tripping on, um, like, cause I am a pretty oh, you confident were tripping. person, <laughs> yeah, I was, but uh, you know, I am a pretty confident person mm -hmm. and I do believe that we can largely create what we want. And like, I felt almost this little bit of like the, I couldn't talk about tell, manifestation. I could, yeah. I just okay. couldn't tell. Yeah. I was almost like a little bit of a God complex where like, I'm fully the creator of everything around mm -hmm. me but it wasn't in like a conquering type of way. It was just like, I am in control of my narrative, the things that are around me. I'm, I am like one, one in the same with all these things. Like, I don't know. It was just a very mm -hmm. weird perspective to be in. And, and, and for me actually it was quite the opposite. I am not in control of anything, right? I am, I'm letting it go of everything. And so that's the experience that I had across all four nights mm -hmm. that I'm letting go. I am, I'm finally taking off the hands off the sitting wheel. And I'm like, just take me wherever I need to go. Yeah. Whatever it is that I need to go, just take me there. As a matter of fact, the second journey this past weekend, I didn't go in with very much uh, intention, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I didn't, you know, I didn't write down any intention the first time around, right? I write down all this intention. That's all the answer where I want it. But I didn't, and I, I, I soon realized after the first night that that's not, that's, that's not the message that got relieved to me. It was actually a message that I needed more mm -hmm. than any of the intention that I went in with. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Right? I think, yeah. People go in thinking that they're going to get a specific answer. Yes. To solve their problem. Yes. And maybe you do. Maybe you, that's that. Maybe that's the proper time. Maybe the, the grandmother deem it being appropriate, being, you know, you ready to, you know, to, to listen to the message, to get that message, to get that download. Right. But for me, the second time around, I was like, Hey, I'm here for whatever it is that you have to offer me what everything that I need. And sure enough, yeah, this, the, 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 this past weekend, the first night was, was around shame, was around shame, was around acceptance. And, uh, and of all my past, of all the, the things that I deemed shameful about myself, Physically, emotionally, um, uh, mentally, right? Mm -hmm. Towards me, towards other, and uh, and 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 again, it, that's the message that I needed. That because it, it allowed me the understanding, the take away from that the first that that night was, you know what? All the shame. allowed you, that you experience, allowed you to be where you are right now. Yeah. Yeah. And allowed you to, to, because ultimately shame is not a bad thing. Imagine, that, that's the, the realization. I imagine if we say something to our kids, Right to my daughters, I tell I, I tell one, you know, one day I come home, I had a bad day, and I say, you, yeah, I tell her you look ugly in that dress. Imagine if after telling her that I didn't experience any shame. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean that. So I think about that all the time. You know, right. like because we in this realm, we are largely talking about shame, and 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 it's really easy to get into that negative mm -hmm. side of it. But we've seen what shameless people and, and societies look like mm -hmm. it's not pretty people literally doing whatever they want mm -hmm. walking into targets and walmarts loading up anything that they can in the cart and just walking out mm -hmm. you know what i mean like yes. no shame 
mm-hmm. whatsoever. That's not a pretty place to be. So mm-hmm. like, like I, I'm full of full agreement that shame sometimes shows up where it doesn't necessarily need to be, or you hang on to it mm-hmm. and you don't release it. But if, if, if you are, I, I, know, I know there's a fine line between shame and enabling, right? If you enabling me to show up in a certain way, you're telling me the message that I'm getting is that it's okay. So that you shouldn't for, have shame around that? Huh? So that, that, that I should not have shame around that. I may experience the first time, the second time, but then but, I- Yeah, but with those same things, hypothetically, say you're just as enabled as the people that are going doing it. The thing is that they're just shameless, right? So like you're not walking into a Walmart loading up your cart and going. It's not because you're the same thing. You're gonna be slapped on a wrist with a miss, mm-hmm. with a, you know, nothing. Mm-hmm. So you could do it. However, mm-hmm. you ha- have that, um, that, that is shame. You'd feel, yes. you know. Yeah, I, 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 you know I would saying? say, I, yes, I, I hear what you're saying. So, so yes. I mean, shame is being removed either from, again, maybe them being told mm-hmm. or that, you know, you're not gonna get in trouble for this. Mm-hmm. And people are just like, okay, I'm not gonna have shame around that. Mm-hmm. But again. Yeah, well, why, why you do, it. why'd you, why'd you put yourself there in the first place? Yeah. What, I, what allowed you? Yeah. Uh, to, you know, to get, so yeah, maybe, to get, you know, people might have less shame with mm-hmm. it, but in general, that's something you should have a little shame around. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think that's, you know, I mean, in, in that specific case, I think it's entitlement, mm-hmm. right? It's entitlement. It's, it's, it's a victimhood. Uh, there's a lot of factors that play, play, uh, play yeah. a role into, you know, into showing up in a, in, in a, in that particular way. But yes, I hear you. I definitely hear you. With um, you know, embracing this these new journeys for yourself, what was what was something that allowed you to feel, say, more more comfortable or confident in experiencing that? Was there anything that you were researching? Any any no. any guides that you knew that you know kind of laid out what to expect? No, man. You know, I mean, that's, that's funny you say that. Like a lot of people, all the the men around me, men and girls around me, you know, for the most part. You know, you can tell they, you know, they went online and did the researches and watch YouTube videos and read articles and, and re- you know, research, research paper. And, uh, and I'm like, I didn't, I didn't feel the need to do the, any of that. Mm. You just, like, felt, just felt more called to it? Yeah, I felt, I felt called to it. I felt, hey, I haven't. I haven't heard of anyone necessarily dying from this. Good. And I'm good to go. I'm too good to go. <laughs> That's all I need to know. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, and, you know, the only thing that, you know, around, I, you know, the only thing uh, around which I had some fear going into my first journey back in October is like the, the outcome what if it changed you? Changed too much? me too much, yeah. where I I was compelled to make some drastic decision, mm-hmm. especially around my family, yeah. being my wife and my two daughters. So that was the only fear, which I didn't have going into into the second journey because nothing happened on that front. Actually, all the experiences that I had around my wife, my daughters were only reinforcing the relationship. Yeah. Yeah. But I wouldn't say that, that, um, that's still a potential. So like anybody going into it, like, and you're doing, you know, you say either a hero's journey of psilocybin, it's a very you know high dose or say psilocybin or whatever. Like, you know, I think for one, you're going into it somewhat to change and, and, and that amount of change is largely out of your control, mm-hmm. you know, cause I'm sure there was a lot of people who've had some sort of awakenings where they realized, damn, like, um, I don't want to be married to this person mm-hmm. or, and the, and even to the, ex, you know, it's hard to imagine say for you and I to be like, Oh, I don't want to feel obligated to this family, mm-hmm. but that is something that could come of it. Right. Cause, oh, yeah. cause in this whole narrative of, of, of life, we only have one life. And yes, it's very deeply rooted in our DNA mm-hmm. to have these kids and, and spread this, you know, spread on that next generation or whatever it is. But 
you could also be this lone wolf and, and just see that that's holding you back in this one life that you have. And that's very something that, that's something yeah. that could be. And, and there, I'll be right? honest with you. I, I, I want to, I'm not saying that that wouldn't probably not be a possibility. Something that will come up in, in my next journey. And, uh, that's still, that's still a possibility, but what is important though, and that, you know, where the charm is going to tell you, uh, is do not act on anything right at the gate yeah allow yourself to sit with that for at least two three weeks and if you the feelings is the same and then maybe it's worth looking into it at a deeper at a deeper level mm -hmm. but do not act on anything the second you go you know you second you get released yeah. <laughs> to to the real world because yeah. that you know that could be dangerous that you may do something that you will regret later. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think, you know, there are a lot of great resources out there. You know, one of the, the books um, Michael Pollan wrote, um, I think it's called how to change your mind. Um, but that kind of dives into several different psychedelics and LSD and even tobacco and certain, certain plants, ayahuasca and, and how that they could be used. And it goes pretty deep into the different, you know, benefits there and studies that are being done more, more recently. And, and they just actually came out with a Netflix documentary of that book. So I just started it yesterday, um, or I just saw the first episode yesterday. Really, really awesome. Like, again, to see visually a lot of the stuff that went over um, in the book. And, and one of the, the first things that they, they do, so his, I think how this is going to unfold is he's going to be using different plants, like every episode, diving a little deeper into the history of it, into the, the science behind it, and I think partake in it, right? So you know, as he's been called to do more of this work himself, because, you know, he's not say a psychonaut from like, you know, back in the sixties and seventies, always just, you know, doing psychedelics or whatever, you know, he's coming to this late in the game. He's been an author this whole time writing and researching and, and um, sharing articles around plant medicine, but he's never really partaken in it. So now as he feels compelled to do so, uh, one of the first things that they were talking about, you know, rather than jumping, say straight, straight to mushrooms, which is still, um, very much labeled as schedule one in so many different areas. They, his, the, his medicine woman that he's friends with, um, told, you know, was telling him about, Hey, let's, let's start with hoppe. Let's do a hoppe ceremony, which is like a fermented tobacco that is completely legal. And, you know, he embraced that. So point being is that there's a lot of different ways to kind of create this altered state, mm -hmm. maybe find some resources that you can learn a little bit about, or find somebody, um, in your corner that you trust. Yes. Um, I'm blessed with having Florina three Hawk in my camp, who is our medicine woman over at space bar wellness. And, um, so she's a, a, an amazing resource again, before again, do what you, do what you want, but before you feel compelled to go and maybe do these other things, there's a lot of other stuff that you can do. Mm -hmm. Um, different ceremonies that she actually facilitates, you know, breathwork ceremonies that are going to help kind of uncover some of the things, um, as well as hoppe ceremonies that she, that she offers as well. In in addition to some other, um, ceremonies, cord cutting ceremonies, using some psilocybin and whatnot. So, Really great resource that I have in my camp. Would love to introduce you to her if anybody has any questions. Um, is there anybody in, in your world that you lean on for more? Yeah, support? I mean, I mean, I was introduced. I was introduced uh, to the conversation uh, to the conversation of plant medicine by by Jose, by Jose, and uh, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> and the fact you know, by the only you know, based on the only fact that Jose is who is for me was enough to buy into it, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that, and that possibility was presented to me a few years ago, two years ago. However, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready back then. Yeah. And until I was, so listen to your body. Listen to, you don't have to geek out, you don't have to nerd out on this stuff. Just know that it's a possibility and you will know when you're ready. Yeah. You will know when you're ready. So do not, you know, do not force things. That's the only, that's the only recommendation I can give you guys. Do not force it. Just be open to it. Just know it's there. It's a possibility. And 
and and you will know when you're ready when you will be ready for it yep um yeah and i appreciate you for sharing man i know um again it's it's something that doesn't necessarily come too easy mm -hmm. you know these things um and it's a very personal journey so being willing to share is yeah is amazing. yeah like i say i i, I had some hesitation coming in uh, going into this, but at the end of the day, that's part of being authentic. You know, that's, that's, you know, <laughs> that's the conversation. That's the conversation that we, you know, we, we, we stand, we stand behind. It's, yeah. you know, authenticity yeah. and being our true selves. And that's part of who I am. And, uh, I, I don't, I don't necessarily care about the judgment. They're going to come from my sharing. Um, uh, you know, people, people gonna, gonna put me in a box, gonna put me, they're gonna label me, uh, but it's, it's totally fine. I, I don't, I don't stress on that. Yeah. Uh, I know that I'm, uh, I know that I'm showing up in an authentic way and I'm sure that maybe, you know, out of 10 people listening to the podcast, maybe one or two will, will benefit from my sharing and that's all, and that's all I care for. Yeah. That's all I care about. Yeah. And, um, if, if anybody wants to reach out and, and learn more about our individual stories around this stuff, um, either reach out directly on Instagram, cub underscore Saldana or strength philosopher, or you can go to the website at warriorlab.coach and just, you know, fill out the little inquiry form there and, you know, we'll be in touch. And, um, for any other guidance that, you know, I would largely recommend Florina three Hawk, uh, we'll link her contact info in the, in the notes. And she's just, uh, really great when I do feel like I need to give myself a little bit more grace. Um, I always lean on her for a solid little hug and a little guidance whenever I need, need that. So, um, yeah. Any last words? Yeah, actually I do. I do. And I want to, and, uh, I should have opened up with this. It's not necessarily a disclaimer, but do not go into plant medicine as a first step into personal growth. You got to break some of the grounds by doing some more conscious work, being, you know, one of them being therapy, being life coaching, I am a life coach, you know, where you are not going there totally unaware of your subconscious status where all these things stuff coming up is going to eating, you know, eating, uh, eating, coming from the, all those blind spots. Say, oh, whoa, 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 what's going on here? Mm -hmm. Right. There has to be some level of awareness around your subconscious, around the whys you are showing up in a certain way, in certain, you know, certain circumstances. So I highly recommend that before before, if you are new to the conversation of personal growth, before you go to plant medicine, you do some more conventional work around yourselves. All right, we'll leave, you, leave it at that. Yeah. Um, all right, guys, until next time, we're out of here. Peace. Peace. Peace.